Mm -hmm, definitely. And you sent me incredible pictures of before and after photos of your clients with severe eczema and their skin had cleared up. Uh, I was wondering what are some of your most memorable client stories? Well, so my very most memorable story, um, and I'll have to send you this picture so that you can uh, put it in a podcast if you wish, uh, was a little boy named Cameron. So we live on a goat farm here in Southwest Wales. And of course, I'm the crazy American lady on the goat farm. And let's face it, you don't take your medical problems to see the crazy lady on the goat farm unless you've been everywhere, right? People, people come to see me when they've been everywhere else. They've been to every hospital, every consultant. Uh, they've seen every doctor. They've used every steroid. And they know that nothing's working. So Cameron was three. His mother brought him to me after she had been to see the consultant in the hospital. Um, and the consultant had tried to put Cameron on um, immunosuppressants for his eczema. Now, his eczema was so severe that he looked like he'd been burned. It was absolutely horrific. Yeah, it was horrifying. Um, and his little arms and legs were like, you know, matchsticks. His tummy was distended um, and he was in a lot of pain. Um, and the consultant, when he'd said, we want to put him on immunosuppressants, his mother said, if you put him on immunosuppressants and then he catches the flu, for example, now here we are in the time of coronavirus, uh, what's going to happen? <laughs> With no immune system, he'll just die, right? And the consultant said, well, yes, that is a concern. And she said, hmm, I think we're leaving. <laughs> and she took Cameron by the hand took him out of the office and brought him here to the farm. Um, so we worked with Cameron for 18 months. Now, again, it takes a long time. You know, people think, oh, I got this cream, I slapped it on, why am I not better? It's like, mm, no, you're asking me for an apple and I'm handing you an apple seed and saying, here, plant this, water it, wait for it to grow. You know, it's like farming or gardening, natural healing, it's very slow. But we worked with Cameron, we worked with his mother, who's named Kayla. Um, he became very close with us. He came to visit us all the time on the goat farm. Um, and we finally were able to completely clear his skin. And I tell you what, that is just one of the things that I'm proudest of. We have his before and after pictures. I wrote a little children's book um, and dedicated it to Cameron to try to explain to him why he had to eat the way he had to eat. Because, of course, it's very challenging, especially when you're a little kid and you don't understand it. You want to have ice cream because everyone else is having ice cream. Um, and of course, you need to avoid cow dairy, as we discussed, you need to avoid sugar, um, you need to avoid all processed foods and things like that. So I wrote a little book uh, called The Critters Inside You, which is about um, that little Amazon rainforest that lives inside your gut and how it's delicate and fragile and how if you were a, an adventurer and you went down into your gut, you know, you would see all these um, little critters that live down there. And of course, the thing about your gut bugs, um, they're dependent on you. You know, it's, they're entirely dependent on what you give them. You make the rain. If you're raining down sugar and processed food and chemicals and uh, the A1 casein in cow's milk and so on, they can't fight you. They just have to take what they're given. So um, I do try to get people thinking of themselves as um, kind of eco warriors of their own little ecosystem inside their gut so that they're actually protecting and defending their gut bugs. Um, sometimes it's easier to do things in defense of you know vulnerable organisms rather than just it's not about you because you have trillions of your best friends with you for every meal every time you eat so you need to think about what they need and not just about what you want mm -hmm, definitely and so many people want a overnight fix so they'll get the latest topical and they're actually doing more damage to the skin and they're not addressing the root cause which is in the gut so it's it's a two hit combo and i'm trying to spread the message all over the world that you have to start healing from the inside and you can't be using these harsh products that are messing up your skin in the long term. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. It's an important message to get out there. The National Eczema Organization actually has a warning tag on their website that says you should not be using steroids um, consistently day after day after day for more than three weeks. And if you are, then you need to stop. You need to wean yourself off. Don't ever stop immediately um, and find another way to treat your situation. Uh, the very worst conditions that we see, the clients who are in the most distress are people who have red skin syndrome. Um, red skin syndrome is detailed on the website called itsan.org. So it's I-T-S-A-N. Um, if anybody thinks that they have topical steroid addiction or red skin syndrome, they need to go to that website 
check it out. Uh, it is horrific. If your skin becomes addicted to steroids, it takes a long, long time to recover from that. Um, it, it can be horribly painful, very disfiguring, and there's not much you can do. You know, if someone comes through the door and I see they have eczema, um, I have things I can give them for that. We give them the kefir, we give them the prebiotic, we give them flaxseed oil, you know, we give them uh, ashwagandha to bring down the cortisol. There are a lot of things we can do. If someone walks through my door with red skin syndrome and a topical steroid addiction, I go, you know what, you're just gonna have to wait this one out. It's horrific. So that is something people really need to be um, aware of, that they can create a worse situation by overusing the steroids. And then, yes, it, we are not, we're not patient anymore. You know, we're not, uh, as I say, I, I was a San Francisco city girl. I came to live on this farm in Wales. Um, my husband as a Welsh farmer taught me about the pace of farming, how you make your own bread, your own beer, your own soap. You know, these things take time. Um, and in the modern world, we want to pop a pill. We want to slap on a magical potion. We want it instant. It doesn't work like that. It's more like, you know, if you've damaged, um, say, the, uh, the Amazon rainforest, you know, you walk into a clearing in the Amazon rainforest and it's been wiped out, um, you have to replant it. You have to sort of recover that ecological system. And you don't just go and dump a bunch of trees in there. You know, you put some grasses, some bushes, some pioneer species, a few birds. You know, you have to really tend your internal garden um, and you have to bring it back very slowly. And it takes time and patience and discipline. Uh, it doesn't it didn't get that way overnight and it's not going to get fixed overnight but the journey is an important journey to take because it has to do with your overall mental health uh your mood and so on so it's that's kind of what we do here at chuckling goat um we do microbiome testing so you can actually find the, the beautiful news is you don't have to guess anymore about what's going on inside your gut we now have the technology to know so you want there to be a lot of different you know, strains of bacteria living inside your gut. Your gut can get depleted. Um, and so with a microbiome test, you can, you can know for a fact exactly which strains have been killed off and also which foods you need to be eating in order to boost the strains that you're missing. So uh, I started making kefir and that was, worked great. And then I saw these home microbiome uh, testing kits and I thought, ooh, I want my clients to have that because then that's very science-based. And then I thought, well, that's a lot of data. Nobody wants to have to wade through 80 pages of PDF on their own. So I started training nutritional therapists to give people their results. So now we got seven of those on staff. Um, and then as a result of that test, we were working with a scientist at Atlas Biomed. It's very interesting science, but you need a lot of fiber to feed your gut bugs. Otherwise, you're just, you put the gut bugs back in the river, but then there's no you know, food for the fish. So you have to sort of put the fish in and then feed the fish. Um, to do that, you need prebiotics. And those are indigestible fibers that your gut bugs ferment um, and they create short chain fatty acids like butyrate, which reduces inflammation inside the gut, as you were mentioning, and allows everything to come back online. Not many of us are getting enough fiber. Definitely, definitely. And 30 grams of fiber a day. And we, it's, not just, it's not just eating one kind of fiber. You need 18 different kinds of fiber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing to me because uh, I, I went to the grocery store uh, just recently and everything sold out except the vegetables. <laughs> 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 Where you need the most uh, yeah. for the fiber and to boost your immune system with all the vitamins and antioxidants inside. But no, people just want the carbs and the dry foods, which have zero <laughs> nutritious val nutritional value. Yeah, it's amazing. People think about it all backwards, unfortunately. And I, I, th I really think, you know, what you're doing is a great thing. We've got to be re-educating people and telling them what they need to be eating. You know, if you want to heal your gut, you need good fats. Good fats are things like walnuts, oily fish, flaxseed oil is something I recommend a lot, a tablespoon a day of flaxseed oil. Um, any, you know, omega-3s, anything that contains omega-3s, eggs, for example. So those things are really important. People need to cut down the sugar and the processed food. All those chemicals, again, they wipe out your gut bugs, just like pouring bleach into the river kills off the fish. And then you do need um, a diversity of different kinds of fruits and vegetables. The idea there is just as in the Amazon rainforest, I know I keep harping on about this, but it's the easiest way to understand it. 
if you walk into a clearing in the Amazon rainforest and there's one flower, one bird, one tree, you know that's wrong. You just instinctively know, ooh, this is not good. You want that rich biodiversity, all those different um, you know, organisms, all the different plants, all the different animals. That's, what's, that's what makes that system work. It's the same inside your gut. You want a massive diversity of all these different strains. And when they start getting killed off and depleted, that's when you have a problem. So you want all those diverse gut bugs in there, but then you need a diversity of different foods to feed those bugs. And what happens is people start getting, you know, you start getting your gut microbiome depleted and then you start having tummy problems. And then you go, oh, I need like a low FODMAP diet, a very restrictive diet. And so you start cutting back what you're eating and eating fewer and fewer things. That's a poison chalice solution. The more you do that, the more the gut bugs die off. And again, you're into a vicious spiral. Um, you're getting more and more depleted. You can tolerate fewer and fewer foods. And so pretty soon you're eating you know, lettuce and salmon and that's it. And that is not gonna give you the diversity of fibers that your gut bugs need. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I suggest that clients eat a rainbow. You know, Think about trying to eat your way through fruits and vegetables, every different color, every different day and rotate it. If, you know, if beetroot is your red for today, then strawberries can be your red for tomorrow. So you're constantly rotating, getting all these different kinds of foods in. Mm -hmm. And so many people are deficient in key phytonutrients like resveratrol and purple skins of food, purple foods, sulforaphane and green foods, lycopene and red foods, and all these nutrients have different benefits to the body. But many people just don't get enough of the colorful vegetables and fruits that are crucial, especially at a time like this, to boost the immune system and to maintain your overall level of health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely true. And the thing is, it's more fun. You know, what I always suggest is, is that people should take themselves to the grocery store the way you would take a seven-year-old and, and turn yourself loose in the fruit and veg aisle and shop with your eyes and go, ooh, what looks good? Ooh, look, there's yellow, there's purple, there's orange. You know, fruits and veg are gorgeous if you look at them that way. What pile your shop, shopping cart up, you know, say that you can treat yourself to any fruit and veg that looks exciting to you and then take it home. And if you don't know how to cook it, put it in this movie. That's what I do. I just blend everything up so that you really are getting this kind of exciting array of different kinds of colors. Um, you know, nature does us a favor. It makes them look beautiful. So if you just let, let yourself uh, turn on your senses that way and get excited by the colors and eat your way around the color wheel every day, um, you'll be doing yourself and your gut bugs a big favor. Mm -hmm. I just bought a Vitamix, which is like the King Kong of uh, blenders. So yeah. I'm really excited to get it. Shout out to Vitamix. If you want to sponsor my show, <laughs> holler at me. <laughs> <laughs> we do Nutribullet here, but I absolutely love it. I keep burning mine out too, because I do. I use that every single day. Um, so it's just, it's a brilliant way to get all kinds of things that you don't know how to cook into your diet. Mm -hmm. Definitely.